Well, hey everybody, it's uh, Ilka here with Sonatype. I'm the field CTO here at Sonatype. And joining me today is Ax Sharma, security researcher and developer advocate. Hey, Ax. It's been a crazy day, isn't it, Ilka? <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. It's been a long yeah. day. And somehow crazy and absolutely infuriating at the same time, hasn't it? Yeah, so let's just give our viewers some recap here, shall we? So this all started Wednesday morning when allegations of a Spring RCE vulnerability existing in Spring core framework surfaced on the internet. And it turns out there was also a separate CVE that people are just mixing up left and right, right, Ilka? Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, it's something that affects... Uh, uh... Spring Cloud Function. Yes, exactly. Spring Cloud Function and the Spring Expression Language uh, Framework. So for the viewers that might not be experts in uh, Java frameworks, Spring Framework is the most popular front-end framework uh, for Java. It's used by millions of developers across the world. And so news of this magnitude kind of very rightly caused all of us to skip a heartbeat or two <laughs> because uh, the attack surface is pretty much exactly the same uh, as uh, was uh, the case. With for J. Yeah, I think some researchers are even saying that this vulnerability, if it's confirmed, which I think it is at this point, there's three or four people saying it, including the firm Praetorian, right? Like this can be much worse than lock for shell the impact. Absolutely. Now, the impact of this is that uh, Spring is used to build websites. Uh, it's used to build Java-based applications. So it's deployed into millions and millions of sites, meaning that there's a potentially quite a large uh, attack surface. So with that background in mind, let's go back into uh, back into the two different vulnerabilities because there was uh, the Spring Cloud vulnerability that was actually disclosed and acknowledged and patched by Spring a couple of days ago. I believe they released uh, an update for that. Can you talk us a, a little bit about that, mate? Yes, absolutely. So what ended up happening was this week, I, I believe around March 20th, the, this CVE surface, it's CVE 2022-22963, Spring Expression Resource Access Vulnerability. Now, this vulnerability does not impact Spring Core, okay? This impacts Spring Cloud Function. Uh, only certain versions here, I'm just reading off the advisory 3.1.6, 3.2.2, and older unsupported versions. And they did have already like fixes for it and everything, but somehow this got conflated with uh, an alleged RCE in Spring Core framework. Uh, if you take a look at the commit, Spring Core's developers had made a bug fix, which it literally it's deprecating deserialization, untrusted deserialization. And somebody on a QQ chat, QQ is a Chinese IM service, uh, they allege that this is an RCE, they provide more details. So it kind of blew up as a rumor. And then uh, slowly, uh, many researchers that are known in the community, uh, in including Alvaro, he's from you know GitHub, Al Alvaro Munoz, he confirmed it, Praetorian confirmed it. So, I mean, at this point, it's it does seem like we are onto something here. That's Spring Shell, what they're calling it, might be a very real thing. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And uh, the reason why, uh, why people are talking about this sort of security vulnerability is not that just that there's a security vulnerability that, require, that allows you to do uh, remote code execution, it's because it's unauthenticated against uh, the application, meaning that anyone sending, sending certain types of payloads could potentially leverage this. What, was, what has made this particular vulnerability pretty tricky is, first of all, you know, there's been a ton of uh, attack code POC flying around for the uh, Spring Cloud um, issue. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, uh, we've been aiming to try and find and independently verify this uh, Spring Core, which affects the core of the Spring Framework vulnerability for quite a time. And you know, throughout the day, we've seen kind of drips and drops of Intel kind of alleging this confirmation. These initial Chinese websites that you mentioned, Ax, they basically just gave some random pieces of advice about. <laughs> you know, finding certain versions of Java and things like that. And really a full picture has only started forming in the last, uh, you know, I'd say- I would say like an hour, an hour or so, yeah, exactly. And I do want to mention, I think some confusion was created by the, uh, you know, Spring Cloud Function vulnerability, which, I mean, the advisory says it's a medium, but multiple credible researchers, including Will Dorman, they've said it should be a high, and we agree it should be a high, it should not be a medium. And then we also saw, uh, 
uh, say Springs developers, right? Like refuting that there's this commit is related to a CV. So that kind of caused confusion, which, which is fine because vulnerabilities like these should be reported responsibly. And in this case, that did not happen. It seems like it all started as a rumor. So that complicated matters. Yes, and, and the other complication, you know, when rumors like this fly, of course, is if you're not living and breathing this sort of stuff, it, you can come off thinking that something really seriously is about to go wrong. So uh, throughout the day, different organizations, ourselves included, have kind of kept an eye on these, uh, you know, just to make sure that we're actually confirming uh, what's being spoken about. Oh, so and, and hold on now. I, I don't want to spread another rumor, but I'm just seeing a new report from Bleeping Computer that cites uh, Chinese cert that they're saying this attack might be under ex active exploitation, Spring for Shell or Spring Shell. Yes. So uh, just something to keep their eye on. I do not believe there's a patch version for this if it's confirmed. Keep me honest there, Ilka. Yes. So as of this moment, let's actually move into that. Um, yeah. Is regardless of reports, um, you know, it will not be unusual to see a vulnerability of this magnitude if it's unauthenticated remote code execution being exploited within the next uh, few hours, really. So from a uh, from a uh, what should you should do uh, situation right now, there isn't a patch that can be applied on the Spring Core as of uh, the streaming of this um, uh, this live stream today. Uh, Praetorian have offered some mitigations by uh, disabling uh, certain types of validation inside of Spring, uh, which is absolutely something that you should do. There are some WAF rules being flying around, but over the next couple of hours, I would expect the community to rally around and find you know, WAF rules, NOT rules, and things like this to help mitigate the issue. What's really important though, uh, to me, is that time is of the essence. And even if those initial reports of exploitation aren't correct, it's pretty safe assumption that in the next few hours, we're gonna start observing that sort of traffic. Absolutely, and I just wanna reiterate, if you're a Sonotype customer, this data has been added to our products. It's under flagged under Sonotype 2022-1764. That's the vulnerability identifier un un until a CV comes out for this one. Absolutely. So. Um, what we have done is we have uh, blogged our findings onto a central blog. You can find it at blog.sonotype.com. We'll be or dev.sonotype.com and dev.sonotype.com, and we will be uh, leaving the link behind uh, afterwards in this situation. What we're going to do uh, is collect all of our intelligence as it evolves uh, over there. And for customers of Nexus uh, Lifecycle, Nexus Firewall, and the Sonotype platform you will uh, automatically receive continuous monitoring alerts about this issue as soon as it appear, as soon as uh, uh, your continuous monitoring window happens. So you will be informed of uh, effective applications. Our recommendation is to begin mitigation as much as, as quickly as you can. And as the situation evolves, whether or not it's more critical or less critical, we will be jumping in uh, to update the article, update our intelligence and keep you safe. Any uh, parting words here, Axe? Just watch out. You never know what it leads to. <laughs> Just like we saw with log 4 shell four or five more CVs came out. So not trying to overplay, but let's not downplay it just yet either. Um, indeed, indeed. And you know what? Um, over the last few months, I've asked the question from a lot of people, if log 4 shell happened tomorrow, what would you do differently? So if anything else, this is... <laughs> Today's the day yeah, to uh, yeah. start thinking about the answer to that. So with that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave you to it. Um, and um, uh, we'll be back uh, when we get some further updates. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone.